Okay, this is a follow-up on the review I did of the Maztec um, LCR tester. And as you might recall, if you've looked at the previous video, I said I had a problem with um, the AC uh, battery uh, unit that comes with the device. You can see I've actually cut the wires that lead to the uh, connection that goes inside the meter. And I'll explain why I did this and uh, my, what my plans are. So there was a reason I actually wanted to cut these wires this way rather than put a little adapter on the end or something. Uh, to sample it. I have a 100k ohm resistor in here. I'm just kind of really quickly repeating uh, what I uh, had before. And so I'll cycle through and it seems to read very good on the batteries. Uh, so we're seeing we get about 100.17k ohms. And um, you could power it off, plug the uh, adapter in, um, or you could just plug it directly and I get the same results. So I'm going to go ahead and just plug this in. Basically going to now run on shore power AC. So I'm plugging into the top. And you can see that we um, jump up uh, maybe 11 or 12 percent air and uh, sometimes it can be uh, higher than that. Uh, interesting thing is if I uh, the power is going through here right now and just grounding the the lead uh, the scope probe lead on here you can see it returns almost uh, back to normal um, which is kind of strange and I thought possibly uh, maybe the, this is a non-keyed uh, AC power, you know, by flipping it from the neutral and hot, maybe that would help, but it didn't. So kind of an interesting thing here, by simply loading this uh, negative side with just the clip lead of the scope. Now this point, though, does go back through this uh, PNC ground and ends up going back to our power supply, um, you know, uh, utility power. Uh, we have what's called Pacific Gas and Electric here in California, so it's PG&E. Um, and if I go ahead and hook onto here so we can kind of just see it, and this is of course under load, we can clip in here. And what I'll do is I'll zoom in on the screen so you can kind of uh, see what the waveform looks like. And you'll notice uh, we've got a, a bit of a problem there. Okay, looking at the uh, screen, you can see that we um, have, um, this is the ground position right here. And it's a 5 volts per centimeter, so it's like 5, 10. This third one would be 15, so a little less than that. It's saying it's about 12.7 uh, volts. And you can kind of see some uh, noise running on there, some high frequency stuff. This is a switching power supply. So to take a closer look at that, we can uh, AC couple uh, the unit. And by AC and coupling it, we're basically stripping off the DC component. I'll just kind of reposition to the center of the graticules here. And then I'll increase the sensitivity of the unit so we can get a closer look at that. And it's pretty terrible. Um, this is a 500 millivolts uh, per centimeter. So we have uh, over a volt or so going on there. We can also sync to this. And we will find out it's uh, periodic. has a lot of additional frequencies in there. And we can measure those frequencies and kind of see what, uh, if it's related to um, the switching power supply, obviously, of uh, what its waveforms are. A lot of times, you know, your switching supply, you might be varying the frequency uh, to regulate it, or you might be uh, varying the uh, duty cycle, or you might be varying the frequency and the duty cycle. Again, I haven't opened this up, so I don't really know uh, what's inside of here. Another concern that I have is this thing draws 14 milliamps in normal mode of operation. Uh, we can measure the backlight. I don't think that's going to be a lot more. And this is rated at 12 volts 1 amp, which seems, in terms of engineering kind of standpoint, uh, slightly overkill. And so I'm kind of curious if maybe uh, Maztec is using this also for some other things. But we have a lot of noise on here. Uh, doesn't look too good. Uh, another interesting thing is uh, this doesn't seem to affect uh, the capacitance inductance measurements when it's on this supply. It only seems to bother the uh, AC resistance or the DC resistance measurements. Okay, so uh, right now it's sort of free running, so I'm going to uh, again kind of put my hand across here. I'm just adjusting the trigger level. I'm just going to bring it down and see if we can uh, sync up the uh, sweep to that. And we can see that it uh, definitely does that. And so we have some, uh, they're pretty much periodic. We have a burst here and then another burst, and we can expand it out and take a closer look at it and uh, also measure the frequencies that might be involved in that. What I've done in this screenshot, just save time, is I did set up a cursor mode here. Uh, just to find this, as you can see, it's definitely got a period to it, so it's periodic. And I'll just take the uh, A cursor and just slide over that first um, event. And I'll turn that off so that we've marked that one. Then take the B cursor and, oops, grab the wrong knob. Bring it back over here. And so the reputation rate of this is approximately 96 kilohertz. 
pretty close to 100 kilohertz. And that secondary one looks about the same spacing. So it looks like this, these events are occurring about 100,000 times a second. And I'm not an expert on uh, switching power supplies, but um, usually I think they run maybe from around 50 kilohertz, you know, for general ones up to maybe 250 kilohertz. So this thing at 96 kilohertz or pretty close to 100K, and the frequency varies maybe during load. This thing must be, is really lightly loaded, like I said, if it's rated up to one amp and we're, we're drawing 14 milliamps. So I think the uh, next step, um, I don't plan to use this thing, uh, uh, the power supply, even if I can repair it. So I'll kind of zoom out to that a little bit so you can see it right there. So, you know, I'm just kind of maybe uh, get, no, oops, wait, this is the wrong tool. Um, I found it appears to be glued together and everything. I tried prying it and everything, and I don't think there's any clips on here, but I'll go ahead and try a little bit more. But probably what I'm going to do is take a, a Dremel tool with a cut saw on it, I'll put it in a vise, and literally cut this little rascal open, and we can take a look inside of it. Um, it's actually raining in California, and I'm out in my garage, so you might be hearing also some rain. Uh, on this unit, as I indicated, it's um, 110 volts, 240, 50, 60 cycle, and the output, like I said, is 12 volts, 1 amp. And it was pretty easy. I already did it. Uh, you can peel this label off because I was kind of hoping there'd be screws underneath of it. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, no screws. So looks like I'm going to have to get serious with it here. It's actually easy to uh, break it open. I just actually put it in the vise, just put a little pressure on it and uh, cracked it open. It does seem to be glued all around the edges. So this is kind of an inside look at the circuit. And I'll zoom in on it and just point out a couple of things. Uh, in fact, I think you can probably just take it out of the out of this plastic box. Yeah, just lifts right out so we can look at the nothing really on the back. <clears throat> then like I said, we can zoom in and look at a few of the parts on here. So here's a little bit uh, closer up view of the unit. Actually, at first glance, doesn't look too bad. Again, I, like I said, I'm not an expert in switching power supplies, but print circuit board looks good. The uh, service mount components all look laid out pretty nicely. Um, Coming through here, it even has an inline fuse and a dropping resistor to what looks like a full wave bridge, a power supply, and then filtering. And uh, this capacitor is um, 400 volts at 22 microfarads. And this is actually a four pin uh, device right here. And I did uh, look it up, and it's uh, a Fairchild power switch which pretty much has uh, most of the electronics for the switching power supply in it. Um, it's a uh, 5H0165R, and uh, it has its fixed frequency. So I was wondering if, it, you know, uh, and we noticed those spikes on there were about uh, 96 uh, kilohertz apart or almost 100K apart. And uh, this fixed frequency, uh, one of the types uh, in this box is uh, 100 kilohertz. Um, so looks like that's it. Here's our uh, transformer. Uh, this is an opto uh, coupler, the Sharp PC817 uh, uh, photocoupler. It uh, has a 5,000 volt uh, isolation on it. And we can see we have also a, a cut in the PC board for a high voltage isolation. Um, this little TO90, I think it's a 92 case right here, kind of like a little transistor. Um, <coughs> excuse me. This is a TL431A, uh, which is a programmable shunt regulator. And so I guess we have a feedback path here uh, through the optocoupler for isolation. Probably can set the output voltage uh, with this little uh, potentiometer right here. Some extra uh, large diodes. Uh, 1,000 microfarad, 25 volt. This is probably on the out output right here, filtering. Uh, so rectifying filtering for the, the 12 volts. And um, again, like I said, doesn't look too bad. Uh, overall, uh, this hasn't been stuck down or anything, but uh, and it's nice to see that there is a fuse in it. It just uh, doesn't seem to work very well for me. I was also curious, uh, I did measure the uh, backlight to the meter, and so on the LCR tester with the backlight on and everything running, it's like 22 milliamps. And again, like I said, this is rated up to one amp. I decided just to pull a little extra current from it to see if that had much of an effect. So I pulled uh, 400 milliamps uh, at the 12 volts, and it actually improved a little bit, uh, maybe by uh, four or five percent in the reading, but uh, didn't uh, get rid of the problem. It's still about six percent error, uh, and then again on batteries, it seems to be uh, pretty much spot on. And the reason I cut this off is I'm going to use the the other uh, leads and the jack, and I want to build my own little supply. 
Uh, it's just going to be a little 12 volt linear. I've got all the parts, put it in a box, and then have accessible much easier to the fuse. And I, because I really want to use mine as a bench uh, LCR meter, um, I'll put a power on off switch in it and an LED to indicate when it's on. So I can just kind of flip that on and then turn on the, the tester. Um, so I'm not really quite sure what the problem is with it, um, other than, of course, those spikes. And of course, I tried to filter the spikes out at the output in case maybe a capacitor or something was wrong. But adding additional capacitance didn't really uh, improve it much. I even used some uh, ferrite, a uh, little toroidal, trying to throw some inductance in there to, to cut it down. Just couldn't clean up the output. Uh, but again, the weird, the strange thing, and maybe somebody might mention it in their posting, uh, once I ground this back through the neutral and it was done through the uh, uh, meter, or excuse me, the oscilloscope's uh, uh, probe leads, uh, it actually fixed the problem. And so uh, I'm not sure why that would be. And I also tried, uh, like I said, it's not keyed on the AC plug. So I tried flipping it because obviously one's hot and one's neutral just to see if there was some sort of ground loop problem or something. But that didn't seem to correct it either. So a little bit of a mystery. I'm not really going to pursue it any further, but just wanted to let you know. Plus one other person posted indicated they had uh, the same problem. So this may be a, a concern if you're uh, purchasing this in terms of at least the the power supply. But I should mention on the batteries it works fine. And I did put it on a bench power supply and it works fine. So it's just uh, this unit right here working with it. So hope that was uh, helpful.